Okay, so Maddie's question was, what do the backslash T's and the backslash N's and the backslash whatever do when you're printing something? So if you were printing something, and let's say you wanted to print name, uh, type, Oh, darn it. See, I, uh, I always forget. Thank you. One of these days, I won't forget to share the screen. And I won't forget to turn the TV on. Um, so let's say you're, you're writing to a file, right? Or you're displaying something and you want it to be nice looking. Um, so let's say this is the stuff we would do for our dog. Uh, so I manually typed in these spaces. What you can do is instead of doing that, you can do backslash T, backslash T. And what that does is it puts, it's as if you hit tab. So the backslash T is just tab. And for those of you who don't know what tab does, in a Word document, um, hello, my name is Zach. If you hit tab, it scoots it over. So now I can put something here. So that's all a tab does. And then if you want each thing to be on a new line, you do backslash n. Backslash n will print things on a new line. So using one print statement, you can have it take up three lines. Also, you can print, if you just print and I think all of you know this, that just prints a blank line. So by default, print ends with a backslash n. And just a review, if we type in end equals, what do you want this to end with, Adam? End with a tab, backslash t. So even though there's no tab at the end of age here, we actually have one. We could do this to be funny. We could go smiley face, back, uh, backslash n, smiley face. So now it ends with two smiley faces. And we could do backslash n to make sure that they have their own line. Now if you have multiple things, print, and you uh, age, name, type, you can use the separate, which will, wherever the comma is, will be replaced with whatever we put in here. So let's put a frowny face. Print, uh, age, sad face, name, sad face, type. You can mix these together copy, just add another comma, end, and now you have that. Does that make sense? Adam. Can't you do like backslash um, uh, apostrophe like, do, like, like a not like ending with it? Yeah, so if you do uh, backslash apostrophe, you get just one apostrophe. You can, these are all called escape characters, so I'll just go through them all real quick. So you have backslash apostrophe, backslash n, backslash t, backslash double quotes, backslash, backslash. Those are the big ones. Uh, now, if you were going to use a lot of file paths in uh, the first chapter, and so what you can do is you can do print. And I think I went over this in, in the intro class. Maybe not with the older intro class, but if you put R, that makes it a raw string, and these don't really work. The, it takes it as it is typed in. So if you have backslash this, normally we would expect just one quotation mark, but because it's a raw string, this the backslash loses its power to make it be anything other than what it is, and it doesn't make anything special. But everything in there is a string. It's called a raw string. And in Python 2.7, which is what I first taught come in here, you actually had three different type, three different types of inputs. You had an integer input, you had string uh, 
float input and you had a raw input, which was just a string. Um, so you'd actually do raw underscore input, I believe. As a post, but now they updated in 3.6. It's now just input is a raw input, which also helps if you're trying to hack in. There's there is a way. It's called uh, well, there's a bunch of different things you can do, but it's like code injection. Which on a website, if you like, if it asks for your name and you are able to type in some code, it then takes what you typed in as code, throws it in your name, and it can break your break the website, or it's a way to hack in. Uh, whereas if it's a raw string, it's less likely to do that because it ignores all of the, well, this is just a raw string as opposed to, well, hey, a backslash N means a new line. So now we need to type that in like, and it doesn't break it. So, uh, questions, anything else? Comments, concerns, cookies, no cookies. Okay. All right. Um, all right, so I'm going to unbold these answers because I don't want you guys to know the answers. Then I'll save this, I'll print it out, um, and you guys can get... Oh. Uh, one thing I forgot to do. Are you guys comfortable with functions? Like if I asked you to create a function, you guys think you could? Uh, uh, yeah, if you're done, um, I didn't necessarily go over that type of loop. You guys know what a while validation loop is? Yeah, so I didn't go over that with you guys. So let me go over that. Hmm, I wonder if that's on the quiz. Okay, so I'll just I'll do two things. So a while validation loop. If I want to make sure someone types in a number that's between two object, two numbers, well, how would I do that? What's the condition that I want met? If I wanted a number between zero and ten. If if x is greater than zero and x is less than ten, right? Print yay. Right. So what would and then if we made x uh, five, what should happen? Yay. yay. You gotta have that in flux. Yay. What? Can you use ranges? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Um, yeah, you got it. So this is... So we should get yay. Now, if I want to make sure that the user has typed that in, so let's do x is int input enter a number between 0 and 10 okay and now what I want it to do is I want to keep asking the user to enter a number between 0 and 10 if they don't type in a number that's between 0 and 10 does that make sense that's like me going David, enter a number between, tell me a number between 1 and 10, and you give me 15. Right? What would I then do? I would go, no, no, no. Give me a number between 1 and 10. Give me a number between, or 0 and 10. Give me a number between 0 and 10. Mm -hmm. 2. Awesome. I accept that. Now, Brendan, no matter what, do not give me a number between 0 and 10, okay? Brendan, give me a number between 0 and 10. No, give me a number between 0 and 10. Give me a number between 0 and 10. Give me a number between 0 and 10. 0 and 10. Give me a number between 0 and 10. Give me a number between 0 and 10. Do you guys see what what I'm doing? Can you guys take what I'm saying and, and the process 
and make that into code. That's a while validation loop. Like else, um, you don't need else. Put it under while, under a while loop. You don't need that. What would the first thing be? Oh. What was the what's the first thing we need to change about this code? It's not integer. Right. It needs to be a while loop. So now I need a number between zero and ten. Do I want to? Is that what this code does right now? Well, this isn't what I want. Oops. Right, I don't want it to never endingly type yay. So, what'd you say? I can do while not. Well, what's the opposite of greater than? There you go. So while it's less than zero and x is what? Greater than 10. Well, because there's no number that is both less than zero and greater than 10. Because anything less than zero is negative, and anything greater than 10 is positive. Anything less than zero is negative, anything greater than 10 is positive, yeah. So, now this is correct. Right, so now when I run it, okay, but I entered in a number between f zero and 10. What should, should we tell the user, good job, or you did it? Because otherwise the, the user's just like, was I supposed to do that? Right, so it, that means we'll put something here that says, good job. All right, well, we, got, we have the good case. So when they do what we want, it works. Now we got to test, well, if they don't give us what we want, oh, gosh. Now it's broken. Now it's broken. So now we got to go back and fix it. So let's let someone. But I think Sackton, I believe you're right. But let's see. Does someone else know what I ha what we have to do next? What's the one thing we have to do with loops, Maddie? We have to ask them the input. We have to change this variable in some way. Because otherwise, it's like, do you want cookies? Yes. Or if you say no, I'm still going to give you cookies because I'm stuck in a loop. Because you said yes the first time, you then are always saying yes to me. So I don't want that. So what we would do, the easiest thing is to copy and paste. And now when we run it, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. Hey, I got it. I was wondering if just me doing that eventually. So that it would be a while validation loop. We will learn how to do, well, what if they typed in a word? Right? Because right now, if we ask the person, right, that's when we would use try and accept, uh, is when we would actually say, no, 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 don't let this error break the code. We're going to code, or we're going to code over this gap and not try to code around it. Um, does that make sense? Do you guys have questions on that? Yes. Oh, and Stockton. That's coding around the problem. That's a try and accept. So we're going to try this suction of code if we get an error, do this instead. So I'm going to try cooking something, but on the exception that I burn something, I'm going to order pizza. But if I'm able to bake something, I'm going to eat that. I'm not going to order the pizza. Make sense? That's kind of what a try and accept is. I'm going to try this new thing. If it doesn't work, I'm going to do this instead. Questions? Is it like a Like, 
No, we haven't learned this yet. So, but if we if you all finish the quiz, we'll go over that. Otherwise, um, we'll finish the quiz. You guys have fifty minutes. Okay, I think this is something you all can do. The first little bit is um, multiple choice. I'm gonna print it out in such a way that. Um, So there's six. I'm going to print it so that you guys take the multiple choice, then you do it, and then um, you, then, you will then get the, the, the coding part because the multiple choice, you type the code in, check it, and give me the right answer. I mean, it would actually probably take you longer to do it that way. So it's currently printing. You guys want to stand up and stretch real quick. Um, for the multiple choice, you don't need your surface, so either set it on the floor or close it up. Will, for you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of the pages available to you. And once you're done with that, you'll upload it, and then I'll give you the coding section, okay? Okay. This is still good. For college, you have to take chemistry, right? Uh, depending on your major, yeah. Actually, you know what? Well, you're. I can't make you not take it on. I'll just give you the whole thing at once, and it. No. You'll share your screen while you take the multiple choice section. Okay. All right. Cool. That's the easiest. I'll put. No. I you almost got me with that. I'd be like, yeah, because then. Oh wait, no. Everyone can see his homework, his assignment then. Um. So this is. Spring 2021, student folders, will. Okay. Save. Oh, I need to make. All right, so while you guys are taking the quiz, I will add the assignment. Let me go grab it, and then we will get started. Um, let me stop the recording.